Don did it get a bit too easy in the end and becomes devalued for you or can you oh. really gain something from that? No, I think you will gain something from the game. I mean, with, with obviously, West Coast were in a position they didn't bring over their, their strongest side, and um, you know, we uh, we saw some things we've been working on, which is pleasing. Of those things you've been working on, we've heard about you know, the strength on team defence and fast ball movement. And so, what do you think you put big ticks against today? Well, I don't know if we put big ticks against too much. I think we've, we've shown some improvement, and certainly it's pleasing from the players' viewpoint that they can recognise. Um, Times where we move the ball really well, um, we're able to chain it from the back half, you know, efficiently and, and connect forward. Um, and equally, times when we were able to slow West Coast down and, and force them to kick to a contest. Um, yeah, so there's there's sort of things within the game. Um, they're not sometimes they're little things, um, but all those things we know add up to, to big things. What about the way in which you commanded the second quarter to the way all the way through to a fair portion of the third? Mm. Is it a pleasure that the group can keep a focus and just keep hammering the scoreboard? Yeah, look, it's it's one of our it's one of our challenges. I mean, we, we want to maintain our consistency, um, and we know that to be a, a really good side, we need to be consistent through um, not only four quarters but week to week as well. Um, so certainly throughout second and third quarter, it was pleasing. We were able to to maintain a, a high standard and pressure around the ball. What's to say if Eddie bets that he turns on a performance like that in a game hardly anyone will remember when the real stuff starts? I think Eddie's just got a great pride in his in his in his performance. Um, he's a you know, he's a guy who's who sets a really strong example for a lot of our players. And yeah, you know, for Eddie, it's regardless of the the stage. I think he just wants to he wants to perform, and you know, that's that's the quality of a really good player. I thought uh, you know just about most of your players did really well today, but uh, the new players that you've got, I thought they did exceptionally well, given the new circumstances and everything else. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, it was it was good to be. Able. We had four guys who played their first game for the footy club in uh, in Dean Gore, Wayne Miller, uh, Harry Deer, and, and Mitch McGovern. Um, and I thought, you know, each of those guys it was great for them to get a taste of it. And I think they showed some signs, which you know is why we've got them to the footy club. So yeah, it was a pleasing first up run for those guys. Do you think of Miller's uh, composure out there? Like he played a few more games than he has. Yeah, look, Wayne's obviously played senior footy last year at, uh, at Central, so he he benefits from you know having played in open company previously. Um, and yeah, you know, we, we're really, yeah, you know, we're going to be really keen and interested to see his progress. Is um, he, sorry, Don. Is he a guy that can sort of push, uh, push for selection, you know, early in the year, round one? Well, as I said up front, well, you know, previously I've said we don't put any restrictions on our guys. I mean, at the end of it, you know, age is, age is irrelevant. If you're in the best 22, you'll play. And you know, Wayne's uh, gives himself a chance if you know he continues to perform and, and play well and play within the, the way we want him to play. How do you balance it for the next game in terms of selection? Yeah, it's something we've got to consider. Um, obviously, we played a stronger team today, um, based upon the fact that we've we've got travel next week and into NAB three as well. Um, so we'll see how we pull up uh, tomorrow and, and and assess the game and then decide what the balance of our team looks like um, to take across to to Albany next next Sunday. Oh, Matt, Matt Crouch started really well, had 13 touches in the first quarter, finished with 24. He was he was impressive. How did you see his display? Yeah, look, it was really pleasing. I spoke to Matt uh, late during the, late this week, and you know, was saying to him, knowing that he's a player. I mean, Matt's Matt's a guy who loves to loves to play. He's a competitive guy, um, and so I was really pleased today the way he started around the contest. Um, that's really his his main strength, and for him to be able to bring that is a, is a good sign. And will Brad play next game? Hopefully, that's the plan. Yeah. yeah. The numbers are, are strong, but there's a stark difference of dominating possession. Handball received in that centre stuff, the hit outs and the centre clearances. Why why do you think you didn't break the game open there? Oh, God, there's always pressure around the ball. I think, you know, we you know, we certainly early we were um, we were under a little bit more pressure in terms of, you know, what West Coast brought, a young group over, keen to impress and, and they uh, they applied really good pressure early days. Um, I thought our guys were able to absorb that and then we started to use our use our hands a bit more. Um, but that's always going to be the case in the game. The game's going to have periods whereby you, know, you might be winning the contested ball and the clearances. Um, the challenge is to make sure that when you're not, that you've, you're able to get enough pressure on the ball to, um, to avoid the opposition scoring against us. Dean Gore's role, he kicked two nice goals today. How do you see his role unfolding in your, in your team? Well, Dean played sort of midfield with a bit of a look forward. Um, we're mindful of the fact with the rotations this year, uh, we're going to need flexibility with our guys to be able to play multiple spots. And so it was pleasing for Gorey to be able to, you know, not only play mid but pr press forward and, um, as you say, kick a couple of nice goals, which is which is always good. Uh, midfielders who can hold their own, play forward, and and finish, hit the scoreboard are, uh, 
uh, are going to be useful. Is it what you're looking forward to? More flexibility in, in your side that they can play various positions, so week by week and game by game, you can change them around a bit. I think that's what everyone wants to, to build flexibility. I mean, um, it gives you it gives you a lot of options come game day if you've got guys who can play multiple roles. So um, we're going to try and expose some guys to doing that um, throughout the course of NAB and throughout the course of the year as we as we try and you know try and build the team. So what did you learn about commanding a coaching group today? Commanding a coaching group? No, we have senior coach now. Yeah, look, today was today was a good experience for, for us as a coaching group, and we'll, we'll, again we'll reflect on that. Um, areas where we can improve ourselves, um, things we did we did well. Um, NAB one's always difficult because you've you're sort of coming off a pre-season where you focus pretty much solely on yourself. Um, you go into an opposition, and still it became a bit about how we want to play. Um, so today was probably a little bit easier in that respect because there's not a lot of scouting going on. It's more, are we seeing what we've been working on? Are we seeing the improvement? Um, are we playing the way we wanted to play? Um, and so from a coaching viewpoint, we'll we'll reflect on that and um, plan for next week. What, what sort of rapport do you like in the box? You like it to be very chatty, or particularly between uh, each section leader and the senior coach? Or? I, I, it's it's pretty much you know, I don't necessarily want to run in commentary on the game, it's more what, what's happening in people's areas and stuff. Um, they need to be across what's going on, whether it's through the midfield, around the stoppage or um, in the back half. Um, and we've got resources and we've got stats and we've got more information flowing in there than you care to think about. It's how we how we analyse that information and how we assess what we need to do and how we can help the players with it. That's really what I see our role is and a lot of the stuff that we try and cover is stuff we've already prepared the players for. So when we do things it's, you know, it's not just come out of a hat. It's it's something which the players are aware of, and, and we've drilled them. If you got a young next week, what do you want out of that contest? Oh, if we go, I mean, let's see what we do with the team first. Um, at the end of it, you know, we want the side, you know, we want the side to play the same way, regardless of who we put on the park. So it'll be similar sort of focus areas and what we've we've gone into this week with. And the so fact that Sloan was withdrawn today is he likely to play next week and also Menzel as well? Yeah, I'd expect Sloaney will be fine for next week. Um, that was probably precautionary for us. It was a sort of, a, again, a no-risk policy for a NAB1 game. So um, I know he's really keen to play, and I'd expect he'll be right to play. Um, and with Troy, I'm keen to, keen to see Troy and see what he can bring to the group as well. So we'll assess that you know, early part of the week and decide what's the, the best group to take forward. What's the answer to making sure when you chop change, as you will, through the NAB challenge, that you get consistent momentum, that it isn't start well, then it falls in a hole, and then you try to pick it up again? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we, it's one of the things which we have to be mindful of with the group is to, as we're building momentum or we're trying to build into, into the season, we want to maintain a level of performance which, which keeps us you know, learning, keeps us moving forward and um, keeps us hopefully playing the way we want to play. So, you know, that's a, that's a juggling act, I think, from us from a selection viewpoint. Tom, the ball movement today was, was pretty impressive and particularly compared to some stages last year. Uh, how do you think you'll go in maintaining that when the regular season intensity is up? Yeah, look, it's it's uh, it's going to be a challenge, but um, you know, there's a, we, we're sort of not necessarily trying to play just purely one way. We want to have the flexibility to play different ways. So today we, we were given the opportunity to move the ball, and we did move the ball quick at times. Um, sometimes we won't have that chance, so we'll have to adapt. Have you got a few more sort of young players here within the blood throughout the rest of the NAB Cup? Uh, wait and see. There's probably another couple I'd like to have a look at. Um, as if we can fit in. I mean, obviously we've got next week against Fremantle, um, and then our last NAB Cup game is 12 days later, which is you know sort of almost our, our lead into round one. So probably in the last NAB Cup, we'll probably try and settle the side down a little bit more. Are we unhappy with anything today, Tom? Oh, I was probably unhappy with the finish. You know, I think I think we we set a really high standard there for two and a half quarters, and I thought just at the end we just we went away from the things we've been doing well and the things that have been working for us. Um, so there's some learning in that for us. Um, from the playing group, just our ability to, to sustain our effort all the way through the end. Um, you know, we can't af we, we can't afford those lapses, and so there's a there's a good learning there. All good guys. Thanks very much. Thank you, Thanks, Thanks guys. Good